let's start with number four. So with number four, there's a little trick we're going to do with this one. So what we can do is if we had to divide by cos, okay, so let me just write this equation at the top here. So we've currently got 3 sin x equals to cos x. Now remember in maths, what you do to the one side, you do to the other side. So we divide both sides by cos x. So on the right hand side, that leaves us with 1. But look here, here we've got sin over cos. Now remember, that's tan. So it's 3 tan x equals to 1. And then we just get tan x by itself by dividing by 3. And there we go. Now we are already at point number three where we can take a reference angle. So we say shift tan of one over three. And if you do that, you're going to get a reference angle which will be equal to 18.43 degrees. Now moving on to step four where we have to look at the quadrants. Now here's something important. For a tan graph, we only have to look at one quadrant. We can choose either to look, well, you need, first need to realize that they're telling us here that tan x is something positive. So tan is positive. If we look at our cast diagram, we know that tan is positive in quadrant three and quadrant one. You can choose whichever one you like. So let's just go with quadrant number one. So we will just say, we'll have a look over here. It just has a plain old x. So we'll just say x equals 18.43. Remember, I'm not going to say 180 minus or 180 plus because we're busy with quadrant 1 plus k. Now, here's the next important part. Tan, a tan graph, repeats itself every 180 degrees and not every 360 degrees. So over here, you'll just say plus k times 180. That is the answer. If you forget that tan only needs one quadrant and you go and do it in the other one, which will be quadrant number 3, the teachers will never mark that wrong. You'll just be wasting a little bit of your own time, but it isn't wrong, all right? So remember, but what is very important is that you use 180 here. That is wrong if you change that to a 360. Okay, perfect, so now we're gonna go to number four. I mean number five. Starting with number five. When you look at number five, I'm just gonna write it up here, so it's sin squared x minus three sin x minus one. When you look at number five, does anything look familiar? Because we've got something to the power of two, and then we just have a normal sin x, and then a number. This is actually a trinomial. Remember, a trinomial is anything that resembles this type of format, where you've got something squared, then a normal, like x for example, and then a number. So that is what a trinomial is. It just has to have that. And so we can factorize this as a trinomial, but if you can't factorize, you know when you have to do the two brackets for a trinomial, if you can't find those brackets, then you can just use the quadratic formula. You know the one that has x equals to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now we'll just yeah, so normally you're solving for x, and this one will just be solving for sin x. But you can still use this formula, where b, this is where sometimes people get confused, b is still going to be that part, a is still going to be the number in the front, and c is going to be the minus 1. You're not going to put sin, so it's going to look like this. You're going to have minus, minus 3, plus minus, minus 3 squared, minus 4, a is 1, c is minus 1, and all of that is over 2 times a, which is 1. So you don't put the actual sin into that square root. That would be crazy. So you just use the numbers, and then you would go get your two answers. Okay? And if you have to do that, you're going to get two answers, which will be sin x equals to 3.3, and the other one is sin x equals to negative 0.3. Now, each of these becomes a brand new question, just like what we had over here and over here, for example. So they become two separate questions from that point onwards. So now for sin x equals to 3.3, your next step would then be to go get a reference angle by saying shift sin 3.3. But what you're going to get is an error. 
all right that is perfectly fine the reason for that is if we have a look at a normal sin graph we know that it has a maximum value of 1 and minus 1 so there is no way that a sin graph can have a value of 3.3 .3. and so the calculator will give you an error so for that one you would simply say no solution okay and then we can go on to the next part which is sin x equals to negative 0 0.3 and so remember when you type in the reference angle on the calculator you don't include the negative so you'll say shift sin of 0 0.3 and that reference angle so sometimes I put two F's here and sometimes I use one so that reference angle will be 17.46 degrees Notice I didn't put the negative on the calculator. What that negative does tell us is that it is in the quadrants where sin is negative. So it's going to be in quadrant 3 and quadrant number 4. So remember at this point, you go back to the original equation. Well, in this case, it's just that, sorry. And because remember now we're busy with two separate questions. So now you just start off by saying x equals and x equals. Quadrant 3 says 180 plus. Quadrant 4 is 360 minus. Okay, so there's our template. And now we just fill in our reference angle, which is 17.46 and 17.46. And then we have to say plus k times 360. k is an element of z. I always seem to run out of space over here plus k times 360. Don't forget this part in the test. I've seen some teachers take off quite a lot of marks for that. And then if you just go simplify on the left hand side, you're going to get 197.46 plus k times 360. And on the right hand side, you're going to get an answer of 342.54 plus k times 360. Then what we need to look at is the fact that they have asked us to do this over a particular interval. Remember, so that's when you have to go try values of k, and that's what we'll do next. And so there, if you try different values of k, you would get the following answers. And so any other values of k would give you an error. And so these eight solutions is the answer. So the proper way, I'm not going to write it all out, but the proper way would then be to say x is equal to and then you would go list all of those different values separated by a semicolon all along. All right, and that is the specific solution. We're now going to move on to number six. Moving on to number six, I'm just going to write the question at the top. So it's the cos squared of theta plus three sin theta equals to minus 3. So this is a different way, type of general solution or specific solution kind of question. So if you look at this, we could imagine bringing the minus 3 to the left hand side and then we might be tempted to say that it's a trinomial and I don't I don't think that's a bad thing. It, it does almost look like a trinomial because we've got something that is squared then we've got a normal term, and then we've got a constant at the end. The only problem is, is that we have a cos and a sin. So that's almost like having a x squared plus a 3y plus 3. So some, there's a bit of a problem there, because you can't have x and y in the same equation and still, and still um, solve it. So the trick with this type of question is to use the following identity. Remember we said that sin squared theta plus cos squared theta always equals 1. We take that and we find cos, so we get cos by itself, so cos squared theta equals to 1 minus sin squared theta. You then take this expression and you put it in the place of cos squared theta, because they're equal, right? It says that they're equal. Alright, so we're going to replace it as like that. And so there we can see we've replaced that with 1 minus sin squared theta. Next, we would just need to simplify. So we're going to have minus sin squared theta on the left, plus 3 sin theta. And then this 1 plus this 3 will give us plus 4. All right, and there we have a trinomial. We have something with a square, something in the middle, which is just... So for example, if that's a sin, then this must also be a sin and then a number at the end. 
many students like to then switch the signs so that this becomes a positive, this becomes a negative, and this becomes a negative. Absolutely nothing wrong with that because we have a zero on the right hand side. However, if you're ever in doubt about that, just use the quadratic formula, the one that we looked at in the previous question. So I'll quickly write that out for us. So you can just use this formula just in the same way that we did in the previous question, where b will be 3, a will be minus 1, and c would be 4. So you can go plug that in, or you can factorize if you would like, you trying to find brackets. I think with that one there is a way to find brackets, but I'm going to just use the formula. And the answers that you're going to get with that will be sin theta equals 4 or sin theta equals minus 1. Now remember this is the point where each of those becomes a separate question. And so we can now, you treat each one separately. So for this one, I'm now going to try to find the reference angle. But when you try to find a reference angle, you're going to get an error. Remember like what we did in the previous question, it's simply because a sin graph goes between 1 and minus 1, but it never gets to a value of 4. And so for that one, you would just say no solution. For the next one, you could get your reference angle, but remember, don't put the negative on the calculator. And your reference angle there, so you'll just say shift sin of 1, you're going to get an angle of 90 degrees. The negative tells us that it's in the quadrants where sin is negative, which is in quadrants 3 and quadrant 4. And so we'll say theta equals, theta equals, I got the theta from there. For quadrant 3 it says 180 plus, for quadrant 4 it says 360 minus, and then you put your reference angle, so that's 90 plus 90. Yes, I should be saying plus k times 360, but I'm just running out of space. And so over here we're going to end up with 270, and here we're going to end up with 270 as well, plus k times 360, plus k times 360. Okay, the other way to do that one, remember what we did in the previous video, when we looked at where identities are undefined, we said that if it's a sin or a cos, and the number is a 1, a minus 1, or a 0, then you can just look at the graph. And I really think this is a good way, because it's really quick. So if we look at the graph, where is sin equal to minus 1? It's over there. And that is at 270 degrees, and it would repeat itself every 360. And so all we actually had to do was just do that. And that would be the single answer that we need. But if you want to do the two-quadrant method, that's also fine. Moving on to the last question. I'm going to write it up at the top here, sin of 2x minus 10 equals to cos of x. So, this is the last kind that you can expect to see. So, I'm going to show you a few ways that students might try and solve this. One of them might be to see, or to take sin 2x minus, or to leave the sin 2x minus 10 there, take the cos x over and make it equal to zero. And then you think, hey, maybe we need to change one of the sins or the causes into, um, we need to use this identity over here and then form a trinomial. But remember, we don't have any squares for this one or this one, okay? So there's no squares over there. So we can't use that identity. Another thing people might try to do is they'll say, oh, but what if we just divide both sides by cos? Surely that just becomes tan. That's not correct, because the sin over cos becoming a tan works like this. These two angles have to be the exact same so that you can make tan x. But this isn't the case over here, because here we have a 2x minus 10, and here we have an x. So they're totally different things within the bracket, okay? And so that technique won't work either. And so in fact, this is a totally new kind of identity. Do you remember in, might have been a video ago, or two videos ago, where we said that sin and cos complement each other. So for example, cos 30 is the same as the sin of 60, because they add up to 90. Cos of 10 is the same as the sin of 80, because they add up to 90. So then what would the cos of x be equal to? 
Well, it would be the sin of 90 minus x. And what would the cos of x plus 5 equal? Well, it would equal the sin of 90 minus whatever x plus 5 is. Okay, so there's always going to be that relationship. And so what we can do is we can change this cos into sin of 90 minus x. Now, this is interesting. So now we have a sin on both sides. So what you are allowed to do at this step is drop the sin. Okay? But you've got to think of this as your reference angle. This is the most weirdest type of um, equa trigonometric equation. So we can ignore the sin now. But remember, there is a little positive in the front here. And so we have to do it in the quadrants where sin is positive. And so we're going to do it in quadrants number... And so we're going to do it in quadrants number 1 and in quadrants number 2. So we would always start off with this part in all of the questions we've done. 2x minus 10, 2x minus 10 equals, equals. For quadrant 1, we won't write anything over there. For quadrant 2, we would say 180 minus. And then we would go and look at the reference angle. But this is the reference angle. So we're going to say 90 minus x plus k times 360. And here we're going to say 90 minus x as well. But because we are, have a minus over here, we know that minuses can change things into pluses. And they have that ability. So we should just put this in a bracket. And then we say plus k times 360. And now we just go ahead and solve. So we move all the x's around, and so we're going to end up with 3x on this side. We're going to end up with 100 on that side. And then if you go and solve that, you're going to end up with 33,33 plus k times 120. Then on the right-hand side here, we're going to keep the 2x minus 10 as it is. We're going to multiply the minus in, so it's going to become minus 90 plus x, and then plus k times 360. I'm then going to move everything around. So on the left-hand side, we're just going to be left with x. On the right-hand side, we're also going to be left with 100 plus k times 360. And that will be the answer because you can't, you don't need to divide, um, we don't need to divide that side by anything. And so there we go. And this video has now covered all the different types of general solution that you will encounter. So I'd highly advise you just go through it a couple of times and you'll see that these are typically the types of general solution that you will be seeing. And that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.